What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjui here with part two of the war series, uh, War Team Evaluation. So if you watched the previous video, we talked about how many different teams there were and gave a little bit of an example of what they would look like, when you would get them, uh, and we kind of defined them loosely. You know, some teams have a hard definition, like the power armor is pretty much widely regarded as Iron Man, War Machine, Vision, Falcon and Rescue, and there are other teams that are a little bit less sturdy, like the Brotherhood can be all of the characters with the Brotherhood tag, or just Magneto, Pyro, Juggernaut with Kingpin, Crossbones, Venom, Ant-Man, plenty of other options on those teams, but we, we kind of looked into it. Now that you know what the teams are, or where to kind of focus your teams to make the most of them, it's important to know where to put them. So. On this sheet right here, uh, we I've made a scale, uh, and the scale is basically where their evaluations, like what teams are better in what situations. Now, there are a lot of teams uh, that can go anywhere. Uh, we'll get into that. That's more of the middle. But right now, I want to start with defense teams, teams that are just way better on defense than offense, uh, and we'll kind of progress through. So, for, as far as defense teams are, there are truly only three. There are only three teams where the value of them on defense far surpasses anything they would be doing offensively or anything individual characters would be able to do offensively. And that is uh, the Hand, the Colson Shield team specifically, and the Brawlers team. Now, the first thing you'll notice is I have Hand here, like Tony. Hand isn't a good defense team, correct. But as bad as a defense team it is, it's equally worse on offense. So if you want to put them somewhere, you might as well put them on a defense squad requiring some level of response for your opponent. Your opponent can't bring in two random characters. It's either going to eat a decent team, and if you're lucky, they might have to punch down a dramatic amount with a really good team, or they're going to get eaten up by a low-powered Kree team or guys I have left over kind of team. The point is... They're not a free win compared to like, you know, a shield operative room or something like that. So the hand is a defense team mainly because they're pretty useless everywhere else in war. And at least you have a chance of getting someone who feels a little frisky and they think they can undershoot it or disrespect the team by one bringing in one or two characters and you get a lucky Nobu res. The only thing I'd like to tell everybody, and just a reminder, don't include characters like Hand Sentry. In the hand team, hand sentry has so much value outside of that team, but you've probably worked on your hand characters for the hand event or to unlock. I don't know. You probably have a sorceress and a nobu if you try to unlock Phoenix. Put them on defense. They're way better on defense than offense, so set them up there. Fury Shield is a defensive team uh, when you add Colson to it. There's no reason to use Fury Shield with Colson as an offense team. 100% of their value is on defense. Before Coulson, Fury Shield becomes a little bit more of a flex team. They're easier to beat because there are a lot of teams that can beat them. A good defenders team can beat them. A Wakandans team can beat them. Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a lot of teams that can win. But early game, I think Shield represents a way better offensive strategy team. Once you've unlocked Coulson with that team, pretty much at any power level, Shield becomes one of the best defense teams in the game. So... Shield is pretty hard confirmed to be a defense team. And the last is the Brawlers. Um, Brawlers are another team that require a very specific response. And more importantly, a very specific high impact response. Even at the very powerful wars I have, people sometimes tend to two-tap a uh, CM Brawlers team. Uh, you know, spending at least two energy or maybe getting a back out. They, they require a specific response. Sometimes people are using a Brotherhood team, which is great because one Brotherhood down is one less Brotherhood for you to worry about against some other of your teams and other teams you have. Captain Marvel, the fact that she heals so great, the fact that all of the defense buffs like Barracks and Medbay give her more health so her 30% heal is just so much more, you can see videos on YouTube of people disrespecting Captain Marvel on her own and ending up kind of paying for it so uh, in my experience every time i go up against a brawlers team i have to show respect 
and anytime someone goes up against my brawler's team, they end up killing, like, they'll kill the other three characters, they'll kill the America Chavez, the Miles, but in general, they'll have to two-tap it. I'll, I'll, I'll take an entire Brotherhood team out of them before they have to go back in. So it's a really, really high impact team. And you always want to look at defense teams as teams that get stronger the more often people have to go into it. That's one of the reasons why Ultron is so good. Because if they leave Ultron up at full health, by the time he, you know, you lose, he gets another free res. Or uh, if you don't kill Iron Fist, by the time you start the, the fight into the defenders again, they're going to heal again. And that Iron Fist is going to heal for a lot. So there's a lot to keep in mind when you think about where to use your defense teams. But as far as this, these are the only three teams that I think their value on defense dramatically, dramatically outweighs their value anywhere else. Not to say that these teams won't win on offense. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just they, they're not a necessary reaction. You don't need to have access to a CM Brawlers or a Fury Shield team or definitely not a hand team. To, uh, to be a specific team. It's just not something that has to happen. So prioritize these as defense teams. And as you're going through your roster, when you're like, well, how do I place my defense? Try to make sure these teams are among the first ones you place as you get them. Because they're going to pay for more and more on your defense. Getting you defensive wins and stalling at your opponents than anything else. The next is kind of weird. And as I talk about it, I get a lot of like hate honestly because i'll put up this list and even now i know you're looking at it and you're saying what tony you're insane if you don't use x on defense and i'm like no yeah you're 100 right like right now i think you're crazy if you're not using your as guardians on defense they're an amazing defense team that don't have very many counters in like a month and a half though when the you know, the Inhumans come out and you can one-shot the Asgardians with them. Mm, probably not as strong. As a result, these teams are evaluated on what they can do on both sides. And uh, the list and the order you see them in is kind of like, think of it like a scale. Like, the higher up you are on this list, so starting with Asgardians, you are way better on defense than you are at offense right now. And then as you progress, you see teams that of course, you could put it on defense, but they produce something. Think of it like how many teams do they beat? That kind of thing. Uh, and we'll get into it a little bit more as we go, but just, like, we'll start. You'll understand. So I have the Asgardians, or as Jeff Goldblum calls them, the Asbergians. Uh, and, you know, you know the team. You know what they are. They are probably right now causing a lot of people stress uh, when you fight them on defense. But they're a great team, and they will beat. A lot of other teams they'll beat an Ultron team on on offense they'll beat pretty much any stock of these teams I think the Asgardian teams can beat pretty much all of these teams without worrying about it and of course some of the ones up top so when you're looking to place teams you could think well I want to place a certain number of defense teams or I want to use I'm going heavy defense I'd like you to look at this list and get an idea that these teams are better on defense than on offense, so starting from here and working your way across as you're placing defenses, you'll know it's better to keep some of these teams on defense than on offense. Uh, Asgard, way, way better on defense right now than they are on offense because they're not necessary to beat something. They're not the only answer to something, like Brotherhood or X-Men where they definitively counter certain things but if you don't have many teams if you somehow have asgard before you have supernatural or sinister six or aim you don't have to put them on defense and be like look at us we're getting defensive wins like wars are won by winning fights not by holding off fights unless you're lucky uh, same thing with ultron and guardians i can actually in the bkt i can actually kind of combine these two teams because for the most part most people for a really long time were like, you have your BKT on defense, you have your Ultron team on defense, and that's it. And that's because they both require a very specific response. Ultron requires a at least a power armor team, and sometimes a double tap. Uh, sometimes you have to use another high impact team to beat them, or something like that. So Ultron is paying way more dividends on defense. That said, if 
you ever use Ultron on offense, he can single-handedly counter all of these teams, including other Ultron teams, because your Ultron is smarter than theirs. You can choose targets. They can't. So another example of a team where, like, no, yeah, like, they're a defense team right up until you don't need to use them on defense anymore for one reason or another. For example, you get moved into a room or your alliance shifts, and you're like, hey, we're going to go super hard war strategy, you know, take off the Ultron and try something else. War is not a race, just like anything else, because in the early stages of war, there are benefits to, to taking war. You know, you take out the barracks or the armory, you're doing very well, you're p pushing an advantage that you have. But if all of your effort at the beginning of a war takes armory or barracks, and then you're kind of out of gas, your opponents ha were probably keeping pace with you, and then they're also... You know, you're not pushing your advantage. You're not pushing the fact that you took barracks while your armory is up uh, for very long. So it really depends on how competitive your war bracket is. I don't, I, I'm not going to speculate to tell you which is right or wrong. But if you are going to be more aggressive than defensive, if you are playing in an alliance where they're like, we're getting, we're buying attacks, we're going in strong, we have alarm set for the energy kind of thing, you're probably going to want to have more of these teams on offense than the eight or nine minimum teams you you know you would need because if you do the math if you go eight for eight you've technically done your job in an alliance war sometimes you just need a little bit more power to push through sometimes you know you're going to have to double tap or you're fighting at very competitive levels so it's better to have a little bit more value on offense and uh ultron and the, the guardians there is a point in time when ultron and the guardians stop mattering in war um, for example, I've taken Ultron off my defense because my Ultron team has been very, very, good, very good at taking out one power armor team. And I can get clever and I can try to build like teams that specifically counter power armor and then it'll take out one power armor team and another cleanup team. And that, that's good enough. But uh, every time I put Ultron on a war fight uh, on a team that isn't great, uh, I get a win. So for every fight where Ultron would have gotten me a defensive win and taken one extra energy, I've used one energy to defeat somebody. And technically it evens out. It's not an ind individual effort, it's a team effort, but my, I don't have Ultron on defense anymore. My other teams are still getting the standard defense wins, but honestly Power Armor is not a phenomenal team across the board. So icing a team's Power Armor team is nowhere near as high impact as icing, say... Uh, brotherhood same thing with the bkt dude there's like five teams that beat the bkt right now wakandans can beat the bkt i'm not even exaggerating like my wakandans punch up like 100k into the bkt i'll kill rocket twice just because i can and they have no chance of beating me um aim can beat the bkt obviously brotherhood can beat the bkt um ultron can beat the bkt and guess what the bkt can beat the bkt so, because there's so many answers to the BKT, while it is a good defense, once you get to the point where you're noticing your BKT is no longer getting you defensive wins, or more importantly, is no longer requiring the same, the same very specific answer, like, when everyone is only able to beat the BKT with their brotherhood, or of course BKT, then you, that team is still great, because it's taxing your opponents a team. Until that point, like, they're great. And then after that point, like if once once it becomes commonplace to beat a BKT, then it doesn't matter. Like just take them off, use them on offense. Kree, War Avengers, another example of teams very similar to uh Shield or Brawlers, like mentioned before. Um or Hand. They're good on defense, mainly because they're not phenomenal on offense. However, the Kree are, without a doubt, the best cleanup crew in the game. They will beat like if you kill a medic and leave a fury shield up the Kree minions will clean up the rest or the Kree minions with Ronin will definitely clean up the rest um, same thing with the war avengers really good cleanup crew but because they don't have any specific answer counter in the game they're better off served as a defense team there are teams that are just straight up phenomenal at defense we've mentioned some there are teams that become incremental Kree and the War Avengers, or any version of the War Avengers that you want to put together, they're just a team that people ha can't just put in 
you know, one or two characters and be like, congratulations, I've won. And in the early stages of war, that's a big deal. I remember even when war came out in the alliance I was in, people would put defenses that were like one Wolverine on defense. And you could some sometimes that was a good enough fight. Or you would try to take out like a shield minion team using Spider-Man and Deadpool. Like that two piece combo was enough to beat out most garbage teams. At least the Reven the War Avengers and the Kree really good at res requiring a decent response. Another note is if you do go up against somebody who has their hand on offense, the hand can't beat either of those teams. So now you kind of see a little bit more of why hand gets better on defense. You might get a win. You're definitely well, you might get a win on defense. You're definitely not getting a win on offense with them. Korean War Avengers better on defense because there's not really a point where you have to where you have to worry about using them to counter anything, but they are adequate in the late game of war at cleaning up or for example Kree can beat an aim team on defense relatively easy easily uh so you can just kind of keep that in mind and as you're placing war defenses or you know deciding who to use on offense or defense the Kree and the war avengers you can you could put them on either side they're a little bit better now we get dead center to the middle for this thing that's been here the entire time ever since i started this video which is the defenders the defenders are like womp dead in the middle because the defenders are an absolutely terrible defense team they can be beaten by literally every team on this screen including the war avengers including somehow the hand the defenders just have a couple of benefits for example if you don't kill iron fist he's going to give everyone back health uh, Iron Fist single-handedly receives the best buff in the game, which is Giant Health, which makes his passive heal infinitely better from the um, the two buff rooms, the Med Bay and the Barracks. And Punisher just does a great da great amount of damage on defense. Counter like It's just a painful team to fight, but they are dead center. The defenders on offense, they can counter a couple of different teams. For example, they can counter a Kree team. They can counter a Han team. An aim team, a Sinister Six team. Yes, the defenders do counter Sinister Six because you're smart and you get to use your attacks and abilities the way you're supposed to, where the defense is always going to have JJ ult on turn one. So while, yeah, Sinister Six beats defenders, the defenders beat Sinister Six. For the same exact reason everyone thought that Nick Fury Shield beats defenders, defenders beat Supernatural, I'm sorry, Brotherhood, and Brotherhood beat Fury Shield. Oh no, Brotherhood beats both of them. Brotherhood beats the defenders very easily actually it's just because you control the defenders and the ai uh controls them when you're fighting them with the brotherhood you kind of break a little bit because you're a better player than the ai hopefully so the defenders are dead center they're also probably the best team to take off defense as soon as you start realizing you need to get attacks in because by the time you realize you're losing fights because you're not getting enough attacks in the defenders are getting one shot, you know, like your, your defenders are not even respond taking a, a very amazing team off of your opponent's offense. For a long time, a lot of us suspected the defenders value would go up because Fury Shield was being placed on defense. Nope. There's just way easier and way more teams that can punch up on them uh, right now. So it's not really something that matters. Uh, then we move to the teams that are slightly more offense skewed. Uh, the Marauders, I know they have abilities that make them good on defense, and all of them suck. They're a fine defense team, but none, none of the abilities that make the Marauders good on defense gives them an edge against some of the teams. Uh, I'm, no longer, I'm not afraid of seeing the Marauders. Uh, when I see them, I don't go, gee, I wonder what happens. A lot of times people end up putting Ultron on the Marauders, which is awesome because then I get to use my power armor team and kill pretty much all of them relatively easily. But, you know, uh, they are a good defense team, even with Cable. They are a good defense team, but I want to use my Sinister. I want to clone someone and fight a better team. And a lot of times that can happen. Even against BKT, I can use my Marauders, clone a Groot, and then I'm going to eat all of the Rocket Ults because I'm going to have Death Proofs and Defense Ups forever. It makes Strife an actual tank when you clone a Groot. So there's just as many uh, teams that the Marauders beat 
as there are teams that it requ like require to beat it uh, in order to progress. So they're, after the defenders, they're the, the first team that you would probably pull off of a defense and use as an offense if you find your offense lacking. Aim, kind of the same. Good on defense, hard counters to certain teams on offense. Aim can beat a lot based on your investment. Aim doesn't need much to be able to beat supernatural teams or guardians teams certain kinds of weird comps that come up uh, i don't know about asgard i've heard people say that i've never my game is not that strong it's like 160 170k with buffs so when i see an asgardian team i'm always like eh, i'm not sure uh, but some people say that aim beats the asgardians maybe i don't know um, but they are a very good offense team and defense team so if you track this you'll see that maybe maybe aim is where you want to be on defense because low-powered aim teams require a very, very specific response or they'll just kind of snowball. But higher-powered aim teams might be a little bit better on offense because once you get to a certain point, aim can be beaten easily by the defenders, by a lot of these teams up here that a lot of people have on defense also beat the aim team. Um... So there's not a specific response needed for AIM, but there's still an amount of respect they have to be shown. Uh, Sinister Six. Sinister Six kind of relegates itself to a defense position, but they are a very good team. They're great at cleaning up random teams. They're great at cleaning up fights that have, like, four people left because they're a two-turn combo team. They're, like, the power armor, just less damage and more resist, more uh, vulnerable. Uh, where power armor is like, oh, no, they killed Rescue. Eh, War Machine will do the work. This team, like, everyone has four hit points except Rhino. So it's very more likely that someone just accidentally kills your Vulture or Shocker and then all of your combo's gone. But they are still a two-turn combo team. They have a lot of speed uh, manipulation in the early game, and that could set up for a better setup. So they're good on defense if you're just like, I don't want to use them. But if you're really using the team or if you've invested in them, they like reasonably so and keep in mind all these teams are evaluated at 150k from the previous video so like clearly if they're like 300k you may find a better use for them but as far as like on the list goes they're a little bit better on offense than defense but finding the fights where they're great yeah supernatural supernatural is a great defense team for like a week a lot of people were like supernatural great defense put them on and then people were using aim to beat them They're like all right never mind like, AIM could punch up 200k on Supernatural. How'd that happen? I mean, it, that's an exaggeration. But it was, like, ridiculous how early game people were like, oh, just AIM beats them. Guess what? Sinister Six also beats Supernatural. Crazy, right? However, Supernatural can beat Coulson. And Coulson is, like, a must-beat defense team. So people started pulling Supernatural off, started beating Coulson Shield, and all of a sudden, it's way easier to use them. Now, they're great on defense. They have a lot of survivability. There was a bug for a really long time with Ghost Rider, which is probably another reason why a lot of people put him on defense. He would just freeze a fight when he did his auto attack if it killed him the first, but he had a second one queued up. So that was probably a lot of reasons why. They are a totally competent defense team, but you're going to get a lot more value out of them on offense. And Wakanda. Wakanda is actually close to terrible on defense. That's why they're here. They're pretty bad on defense. You might get wins, but I promise you it's not because anyone's, like, they're not getting good wins. Like, people aren't punching down and you're getting a victory. Like, it's because people are like, oh, it's only the Wakandans. I'll bring in, got like, two characters and then they get beat. So, Wakandans, way better on offense than defense for the most part. But they still do require, like, someone to not be licking windows. So, put them on defense if you want, but they will beat pretty much every team including the brawlers i think colson shields a little bit too much to ask but to be fair they're kind of crazy they're great at cleaning up they're absolutely phenomenal at taking out five random guys that are high power they're great you could beat ultron teams with them if you have a good enough investment uh look at and I, again i'm tra i'm talking about fights that are within a certain level whenever i discuss like how things go it's not like a parody fight it's at least a parody fight if i say the wakandans can beat the bkt i'm saying that they're capable of doing it in a punch-up um but they're at least doing it at parody i will never tell you a team will beat another team at a punch down that's what teams are supposed to do i'll only tell you if a team won't beat another team at a punch down because that is news you should know that 
you should know that you are not going to use your defenders to beat, uh, um, I don't know, Asgard in a punch down. Like, that's crazy. Don't do that. But you actually know that. And then that's kind of how I have it now. I didn't include the, um, as I'm sorry, the Inhumans yet because there's no reason to. We don't know what they do. We know they beat the Asgardians. They probably are going to be an offense team. That's my guess. From everything I've read and seen, they look like a Fantastic Four X-Men style team where they'll just go in, win the fight, and walk away. But right now they have a specific counter in that they get they counter the uh, Asgardians, so you should be fine. Uh, let's just throw that out there. And then we have the offense teams, and I don't think anyone's going to be surprised when they see this. Power Armor, Fantastic Four, X-Men, Brotherhood. These teams are offense teams pri primarily for one reason. What they do on offense is so vastly improved compared to what they do on defense that you would be foolish or trying something clever if you did anything else. Uh, power armor is absolutely terrible on defense. Uh, you don't even need to respect them by bringing in a real team. You can you could two tap it with guys I have, like underpowered. Like you could punch up on the power armor team with ravagers with the, their timing is all off you could send in one guy to just eat all of the turn two ults and then pick them off with any team they do not do anything on defense offense they'll beat pretty much anything they could like a sufficiently powerful one can punch up into the bkt they obviously beat ultron and that gives them all of the value as long as you keep seeing ultrons on defense power armor beats those teams more often than not um, no notes on that. Fantastic Four, well, they have Namor. So, like, you could probably replace Namor with, like, Thanos and make that a defense team, but why? They work really well with Namor. Namor does great things in war. Team is great on war offense. Don't even think about putting them on defense. Uh, X-Men, they win. They, they Your X-Men will beat every team. They, there's not a single team in this game that the X-Men... The X-Men might not be a stronger X-Men team. That's it. So if you're looking to be clever and you know everyone's like, huh, how am I going to beat this X-Men team? Put your X-Men on defense. If you're trying to win wars and do well, that's it. Just, like, use your X-Men. They are one of the only teams in the game that you're like, doesn't matter who they are or how strong they are. I'll use my X-Men. I'll probably win. They're also, like, the easiest counter to Coulson. So. And then Brotherhood. I think Brotherhood ekes out X-Men. These are not really in any order, but because it's all offense, so who cares? Uh, Brotherhood, just so good. And uh, you'll notice this is the version of the team here. It's crazy. It's the one I use. Uh, Magneto, Pyro, Juggernaut, Venom, and Kingpin. I use this exact team. Uh, this exact team has been beating the piss out of BKT teams, Ultron teams. Like, doesn't matter. The only team I can't beat with this is Coulson because I've never tried it because I've always found a different team to beat bef uh, before I've used my X-Men. But these, I think, are widely regarded as, like, these teams are offense, don't put them on defense. The only time you want to put these teams on defense is, one, you don't care about war. Two, you're going on vacation, so you're not going to be able to care about war. Or three, you think you're being clever because you're trying to edge out a slight advantage in a super competitive war because you're a whale, and that's what whales do. I don't know. I can't help you. Um... Again, the, the sheet has been updated to have this now. So if you guys got the sheet from the last video, description will be in the below well, this one. So this will be here. And I kind of, the entire point of all of this was going into the next part, which we talked about a little bit, the rankings, the Sweet 16. Again, next video. We're not worried about that right now. Uh, as a player, you're going to unlock more teams as you play. What I want you to do when you see this is I want you to go, hmm, what should I do with this team now? Uh, knowing that full well that these are the, the full list of teams, right? These are the teams we talked about before. Early game, mid game, late game. So, in it, for example, you'll see Defenders, Guardians, Hand, Kree, and War Avengers. Say these are the first five teams you get, right? And because of the reason, these are the first five teams you get to 150k power, give or take. Are you going to put them all on defense and then have no attacks? No. Of course not, right? What are you going to do? The next video is going to go into real detail about what to do with how many teams you have, like where to place them and in what order. But just looking at, say, these five teams are here, your strongest teams are 
Guardians, Defenders, probably Kree. We already have the Hand and the War Avengers uh, on the list, so I'd like you to just say, oh, I have all five of these teams. Well, the Hand is a defense team, so if I have to place at least one defense team, Hand goes in. And then uh, eh, Kree and War Avengers are really close. Uh, I don't think my Kree team can beat too many teams, so I'll put the Kree on defense, and I'll use the War Avengers on offense, and I'll have three offense teams and two defense teams. That's just an example of what I would do in, the, in this kind of situation. And as you progress, as you unlock more teams, uh, you'll be able to make more decisions. You'll refer back, like, okay, well, you know what? I've unlocked as Guardians, so maybe I could take off the Defenders on defense because the Defenders are capable of beating something, etc., 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 so uh, hopefully this is helpful. Um, hopefully you see this and you can use it as a reference and say, okay, this is great. This is where we're going to go. This is how I can do it. And, and you can plan around this too. You can say, Tony, I'm confused. What team do I need yet? I'm like, well, have you worked on all of your flex teams? How many war teams do you have? How many war offense teams do you have? And from my opinion, I think it's more important to have more offense than defense. And my opinion is of somebody who wins a lot of wars, so maybe that's right. But either way, if you want to go defensive heavy, it's probably best to use uh, teams from the defense section and then just start adding teams here. You know, look at the teams that are slightly on either side and move on. If you want to go offense heavy, uh, you just kind of hedge from here and you could start pulling overall power teams. So in the perfect world, I guess if you kind of read this, your best eight defense slots are Hand, Shield, Brawlers, Asgardians, Ultron, BKT, and then like Kree, more Avengers, one of, you know, one of these, one of these middle tiers. And then your best offense is the four big attackers, Wakanda, Supernatural, AIM, Sinister Six, you know, Defenders and Marauders. And I think that most people would agree if that's what your war defense and war attack looked like, You'd be in a really good spot in war. You'd be able to win a lot more fights. You'd be going into fights with confidence because you'd have a lot of different answers to a lot of different problems. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it, guys. The next video that's coming out will be, finally, when do I use teams? How do I use teams? How do I place teams? That kind of thing. And it'll be the, uh, the rankings, the official rankings and uh, how to explain it. But that's pretty much it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.